Okay, let's start on the normal GI blood supply. Or let's talk about, first of all, how everything on the GI is derived from. So, we are looking at endoderm, which gives rise to three things. So, endoderm give rise to the foregut the mid gut the hind gut what is the foregut now the foregut is starts from the esophagus all the way to the second part of duodenum okay and mid gut is after that part which is second part of duodenum uh, starting from the third part going towards the uh, the two third of the transverse colon and the hind gut starts from the remaining one third of the transverse colon uh, and goes up to the upper border of the uh, of the anal canal, which is the above the pectinate line. So this all is ectoder uh, endoderm. My bad. Uh, and now when we talk about the uh, lower below the pectinate line, we are looking at ectodermal origin. So while we are talking about uh, here so let's also mention the blood supply which is really important so we we divided into uh into three things this was foregut right foregut so the foregut is supplied by celiac artery uh, the midgut is supplied by sma which is a superior mesenteric artery and the hind gut is supplied by inferior mesenteric artery all of them all of these arteries, they're coming straight from aorta at the anterior side of aorta. So let me just draw that here. We got aorta. These are the three things. Now at the level they come, which is different. So celiac is the first one, which comes about uh, at T12. And then we are looking at uh, L1 and L3. And aorta bifurcates into common iliac, uh, right common iliac, left common iliac, at the level of L4. So by forcation of the aorta. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so now uh, one thing which is extra here, the midgut, midgut would herniate out, and it's herniate out of the umbilical cord, uh, you know, the, the area of the umbilicus uh, is going to herniate out from the umbilical ring, not the cord, my bad, guys. Uh, umbilical ring. So this is the ring. It's going to herniate out. And it's going to grow, 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 grow. And then it come back. When it come back, uh, it's going to rotate around SMA at 270 degrees. And if uh, if that doesn't occur, there's a pathology. It's called the uh, malnutrition, intestinal malnutrition, in which you will find cecum, uh, which is normally present at the right lower quadrant. The cecum is going to be present at the right upper quadrant. And also you will see some bands and fibrosis. And leading to obstruction and gangrene. Okay, uh, so now let's talk about some lateral 
full defect, closure defects, closure defects. Okay. In those, what do we really have? We uh, so ge generally we are looking at the ventral. So first of all, let's let's go back a point. We are looking at ventral wall defects. So what does ventral mean? Ventral means anterior wall defects. So wh what comes anteriorly? Okay. So in anteriorly, you have you have cephalic, which is again also known as rostral full defect you have caudal full defects and also you got these lateral full defects which i mentioned up top so if you have a, a, a cephalic uh, uh defect full closure defect you can have sternal defect like sternum you know sternal defects for example ectopia lentis my bad, not lentis cordis. Ectopia lentis is for the eyes. Ectopia cordis, okay, in which uh, the heart is outside the chest, uh, okay, and uh, the caudal one, you are looking at uh, something called bladder extrophy, in which uh, the bladder is outside the abdominal wall. Okay, so you got these uh, cephalic and the caudal, also known as rostral, though. Uh, now we are going to focus on lateral fold defects, lateral fold defects, in which we got the gastrogesis and um, fellow seal. G is open, so all the contents of the, of the, uh, of the abdomen, they're going to come out without any covering. While here, the contents are going to come out, but it's covered within the peritoneum how the peritoneum look like it looks like a uh, a grayish light gray shiny sack light gray shiny sack okay i uh, know in, in this case the 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 uh the intestines are just open and here the intestines are within that now another thing the defect it's coming out somewhere right so where's the defect the defect is para umbilical but over here it, the defect is through umbilicus through that umbilical ring okay now uh, this one, the umphalocele, it is associated with things, and this one is not much associated other than the younger age, but not, not much important. But here it's important. It is associated with, can uh, like trisomies, all the trisomies, also some uh, any structure abnormalities. What are the trisomies? They're the 13, 18, 21. Okay. Uh, that's all for this one. Now let's talk about something known as congenital umbilical hernia. So umbilicus herniation. How? Let's let me tell you. Normally, you know, when the intestines they go out f uh, for to grow and then come back, they would normally do go out. Okay. And and how are they able to go? Because of the open umbilical ring, right? So when they come back, normally this would close. But in this case, this didn't close. So you would have a failure of the umbilical ring to close. So you would have persistent umbilical ring through which the intestine do go out when the fetus is born. As uh, When would they go out? For example, if there is a... Uh, child is coughing or putting any any pressure um, that that's gonna get these intestines out a bulge basically will be out will be seen it is associated with uh, the you you have it with Down syndrome or congenital hypothyroidism congenital hypothyroidism a child with a with an umbilical hernia congenital hypothyroidism this is one of the uh, risk factors or uh, not the risk factors, but the features of congenital hypothyroidism is uh, hernia okay uh, or the baby when the baby cries that's another story and another thing that we can think of okay so yeah that's uh, pretty much here uh, what we have um, now let's shift some gears and let's talk about tracheo 
esophageal fistula. Okay, so what do we have here? We got the trachea and we got the esophagus. Uh, uh, we got a lot of uh, types in there. One type is, which is the most common, in which that esophagus is attached to the trachea and there is an atresia, a blind pouch, basically, of, this, uh, of the proximal esophagus. And distal esophagus is tied to trachea. So guess what? The air is going to come here and go down. So guess what? No rocket science here. You will see gas in the abdomen. Right? Understood? Great. Um, so if it is not attached, now think about it. You got the trachea and you just got esophagus, a blind pouch. You will not have a gas in the abdomen. It's called gasless abdomen, right? Or you just have, a, you know, here it's a proper figure, yeah? You have a trachea here. That makes sense. Okay, so now let's talk about if you don't have in, in tracheoesophageal fistula, what's going to happen? Well, because you cannot swallow the amniotic fluid and your the, the, the fetus is producing, producing, producing the amniotic fluid, you're going to have polyhydraminose, right? That's the first thing. Because you can't swallow anything, that means you can't uh, put any any feeding tube. So no feeding tube. No, f you can't put a feeding tube because it's a uh, it's a blind pouch. It's an atretic. Okay. Uh, if uh, if a child you you try to feed the child again, you try to give bread, uh, the milk or anything uh, with the first feeding. The child is gonna drool, choke because it's not gonna it's, it's not gonna go through, so it's gonna drool, choke, and vomit that material out. So, and it, when it does, when it do all of that, it's gonna go into the larynx, causing laryngospasm, which leads to cyanosis of that child. Uh, and uh, the so uh, uh, y this is pretty much what you can think of in, in tra tracheosophageal fistulas uh, it's a pretty simple concept okay but most important thing here is when you see tracheosophageal fistula it is associated with vectral vac t r o l t e r l in which you got the vertebral defects anal defects uh, cortic defects uh, tracheoesophageal defects, renal defects, and a limb defects. Okay, so vectoral with tracheoesophageal. All right, then let's move on to let's move on to intestinal atresia. Atresia. And what atresia is, you gotta know the, the meanings, right? So it's a it's a closed or absent tube. So, if you're talking about duodenal atresia, what's going to happen in duodenal atresia? The the uh, this the the uh, it, it is a failure to recanalize. So, uh, duodenum it proliferates first, and then it reopens itself. The lumen reopens. Okay, but duodenal atresia occurs when there is a failure to recanalize. You cannot recanalize or reopen the the proliferation. Okay, so now if you if you close this duodenum, guess what's gonna happen? Well, you're gonna have a double bubble sign in which. So you let me just draw this here. You got the stomach, and you got the duodenum all the way. Okay, uh, and just let's suppose that we have a pyloric sphincter here. So, and here's uh, the duodenum. Well, actually, it should have been the other way, but uh, okay. Here's the duodenum, and after this place. 
you can't fill it because this place failed to recanalize. And that's the fourth part of the duodenum zone. So here's what we have. So what what what's gonna happen is you're gonna this is gonna build this is gonna build up, it's gonna become huge. That's one bubble, right? That's one bubble. And this is gonna be pyloric sphincter, so you can't get this one bigger, and then you will have another bigger loop just like this so you will have a double bubble sign okay that's for the duodenal atresia and it is as a whenever whenever you think about duodenum always think about uh down syndrome duodenum associated with down syndrome that's uh not always true but uh keep in mind it makes life easier um uh, then yeah we, we're gonna think about the other one which is the uh the jejunal or ili, uh, jejunal and ileal atresia. So these are associated with some, uh, uh, you have ischemia or you got decreased blood flow, for example, decreased uh, SMA, uh, you know, blood flow to SMA. It leads to ischemic uh, necrosis and all that. So uh, in these ones, you're going to have, uh, you are going to get the dilation. So for example, you have uh, no blood flow to this area, right? So you're going to have a, a, a peel appearance, apple peel appearance, because it's going to uh, it get ischemia, get necrosis, it's, the intestine is going to die, and the proximal is going to be dilated, and the distal is going to be apple peel appearance. Uh, you're going to have, you, you will see triple bubble sign, which is, you will have a dilated stomach, dilated uh, duodenum, and, uh, uh, and dilated ge ge proximal jejunum. Uh, that's a triple bubble sign. And same thing, same thing goes for the colonic trees. Yes, same place, same thing. The, the proximal dilation and distal apple peeling appearance. Uh, let's uh, let's end this here, and we will catch up tomorrow.